Hey there, my name is Promise, and welcome to Settlement Survival, the colony builder that can be best described as the true successor to Banished, a genre-defining title. This game is big, it is beautiful, and as of today, it is going into full release after just over one year in early access. So in recognition of this momentous milestone, the developers have offered to sponsor a series of videos while I build out a new colony, and I am oh so happy to accept because I genuinely love this game. So a big thank you to them for that, and of course if you have never seen this game before and you like what you see and you like to learn more, well good news, there is a link in the description down below. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and start up a new game. We will be playing on standard mode today, though we have played on the Easter Island story map before. That was kind of fun, I recommend you check that out. For our town name, let's call this Relyton. Why? Because it's going into release. Release? Relyton? Yeah, that kind of works for me. For our preset difficulty, I'm going to be going for a hard game today. We could go for extreme mode, but that does tend to require some different early game strategies, and I'm going to assume that a lot of people are watching this video having never seen the game before, since this is full action release. So, hard is still challenging, but mostly accessible for you guys because a lot of the rules are going to be the same. As far as the difficulty, we could change up a lot of different variables, same with the map seed, but all of these default options seem pretty solid to me. So let's go ahead and start up a new game. And here we are. All right, now the first thing you want to do is explore the map because there are a lot of randomized elements and you're looking for a good starting location. I have a few different criteria I tend to work with. One, I want to set up somewhat close to some water because it makes it easier to get some extra food via fish and we like to have early game access to water mills just to boost up my productivity. We also need plenty of space to grow because you're going to start off with a marketplace and that makes for a very good residential neighborhood. So don't pick a place that ends up being too cramped to really take advantage of the real estate. Also, I like to set up somewhat close to some mountains, not right up against them, but close enough that when I want to start moving toward mines for the uh, stone and for the coal and for the iron, we want to be close enough to these that that's an easy thing to do. Lastly, we're looking for hot spots. There are quite a few here available to us. We have fertile soil for better farms. We can get some more fish. We could also possibly get some luxury resources like gold and jade. There's actually a whole bunch right over here. That's interesting. Okay. Well, I kind of like the very center of the map, honestly. This doesn't seem too bad. It's got a couple really good farming spots. It can be kind of close to some water on a couple different areas, and there are mountains nearby. This seems like a pretty solid start, so we're going to set up, let's say, right up over here close to the lake. I think that's going to be fine. Simply click down, and we are starting off in our new colony. We have a storage yard, a builder's cabin, and a marketplace to get us started. Perfect. First thing we want to do is gather up some of the nearby resources and clear out some space. So I'm going to go to commands down here, and we're going to gather up all resources immediately nearby. We're going to need all the lumber, the stone, the coal, the food, whatever else it's going to be, and we need some space. Might as well just get started with that. Beyond that, we have a lot of different construction priorities. We do need to get some housing going pretty early on. Uh, I think I'll just go ahead and set up, let's say, six houses just for now to get us started, though we'll probably end up needing more than that. If you're not familiar, this game does function just like Banish in that when you place down a house, if an adult man and woman are both available, they'll pair off and start a new family in these houses. The more houses you have, generally the more space you have to get children and rapidly increase your population. That's good in the sense that you can get more people to work with more jobs and get more resources, but you have to be careful to control that growth because if you grow too fast and you can't produce enough food and water, people start to die off, and that's obviously not a good thing. You don't want to enter a death spiral. So we'll be kind of slowly but surely growing out our housing and stuff close to the market so we can get as much value out of this as possible. Beyond that, we have other buildings we need. Agriculture is quite nice for the fields and stuff, especially with some really good fertile areas for farming down over here. We also need to get a gatherer's hut so we can get extra food from the forests. Same with the hunter's hut. Forester's hut lets us plant down more trees. We'll need that. Also some wells. All very important. And then once we gather up some resources, we'll be able to turn that into firewood, clothes, or tools. All really important. For now, though, I'm going to set up some simple grid patterns, get some of our roads up and running so I can kind of visualize where I want to expand. I do want to move out toward this lake over here for some food, so let's go ahead and plan that out with a fishing dock. Are we actually going to be able to reach this, or is this just barely out of range? I think you actually have to set up, like, over here, unfortunately, to pick that up. Boo, I would have rather just set up over here. It's much closer. All right, well, I may have slightly misjudged that, but that's okay. For now, our villagers have plenty to do, simply chopping down all of the trees and setting up their homes. So we'll just go to 10 times speed and kind of let them do their thing. 
The developers did, by the way, recently revamp the UI, which is pretty awesome. I gotta say, it looks very snazzy. Everyone's freezing because it's really cold outside. Yeah, fair enough. Soon we can get some insulated housing, probably the better. Let's see, what are some other things we can go ahead and just queue up that we know we're going to need? Let's get ourselves a big well. That is something that people always are going to need just to get some water nearby so they don't have to travel very far to meet their needs. So we'll do that. And then I really think we need to get a chopping house going fairly early on because I'm going to need plenty of firewood to survive, especially if they're already starting to freeze. So let's try setting up, let's say, right over here, close to the stockpile, so that as our wood gets dropped off, there's less travel time between the workers who are gathering the resources they need and then dropping it off somewhere close to the housing. Travel time is a very, very important aspect of a lot of these colony builders, and settlement survival is no exception. The more you can minimize that, the more you get kind of a soft efficiency improvement for all of your buildings. All right, we need to get some food production going, and I would say we could go for some agriculture, but I think it might be better for now to go for the gatherer's hut and the hunter's hut. There are actually a lot of animals nearby. I see some turkeys and some llamas, or alpacas, whichever they are, so we'll be able to hunt them down to get some extra wool, some feathers, and some food. We'll want that, but the gatherer's hut basically are going to uh, gather up Resources from the ground, we're thinking things like mushrooms, herbs, that kind of stuff, and those grow in forested areas. So I want to place this in an area that is surrounded more or less by trees. A very effective combination of something you can do, and uh, let's say we'll do that over... For now, let's go ahead and do that right up over here. Something you can do that's very effective is to set up a gatherer's hut, a hunter's hut, and get a forester's hut all in the same area. And what you do is you start planting down trees and keeping a good thick wooded area over here where uh, lots of stuff is going to grow on the ground, and it just makes your gatherer's hut a little bit more efficient. For the hunters, I actually don't think it matters quite as much. Animals don't seem to be restricted to the wooded areas. They kind of wander where they want to. So placing this actually closer to the marketplace so we can drop off our food doesn't seem like a bad idea. We'll just go ahead and place down over there. We have a well set up, so we have someone already working. And one thing I need to do is make sure we have set water as our recipe. It's the only option at a well, which makes sense. That's going to be different as we get more production and factory types of buildings where you can change up your recipes. For example, what kind of clothing do you want? What kind of tools? you want to make, that sort of thing. Over here we have our chopping house. Here's another example where we need to make some domestic fuel. I could use some dried animal dung if I had any, but what we're going to do is take some timber and start making domestic fuel that way so people are able to heat their homes during the winter. Seems fine. Now over time you're going to be gaining some tech points, and that actually just happened for us just now. So if we click up over here we can choose what kind of technology we want. Oh wow, they really reworked this entire UI, it looks pretty nice, awesome. Alright, so there's a lot of different things we can go for here. Um, one top priority I usually have is to get something like a research institute, where we can start generating extra tech XP by having people work in this building. That's a great way to ramp up your science production, which just lets you get a lot more things. At the same time, there's a lot of other good stuff we can get over here. I don't think I've seen some of these. Insurance for caravans? Interesting. Good for trade. Uh, we can get some mining techs. We could go for some extra construction, material recycling if we need to demolish any buildings. A sawmill is going to be very important for me. Yep. And then ag agriculture, too. Yep, yep. We need all of these things. Uh, choosing your priorities is a little bit tricky and takes a bit of experience in the game to know what ends up being the best for you at certain stages, and also sometimes you just need to read the map. Some resources are available and you can go ahead and rush into it, like getting some mining tech. Others are not, and you'll need to come back to that a little bit later. We can see the builders are going around and finishing out all the roads, so now's a good time to go ahead and build out that research institute, take one or two of my workers to start really ramping up my tech points. This little bubble right here, as it fills up, is going to be representing your tech points. So right now, we should be getting other points pretty much any time now. It does take longer and longer for every consecutive point. That's where you need to be getting things like the Research Institute so you can stay ahead of that curve and continue growing this. If we want to start producing things like paper and books, we can really ramp up the science. But for now, just one worker over here is going to make a pretty big difference and help me keep on pace. Now, I wouldn't mind getting something like a fishing dock, even if we can't quite reach the fish over here that I'm looking for. I think that getting a little bit of extra food production there would be pretty good. A 58% water area means it's pretty efficient. It's about as good as you can ever really hope for. So let's go ahead and build that out just for a little bit of extra food diversity. Is there anything else that strikes me as really important to get right now? It wouldn't be a bad idea to get something like a chapel or a clinic. Up over here, you can see that we do have happiness and health for all of our population. 
Uh, if we can get things like, I don't know, let's say better food diversity, more drinks, make sure we have some herbs, health is naturally going to start going up. And the healthier your population are, generally speaking, the more efficient they're going to be in various different ways. The same thing is true with happiness. A chapel is a good way to go ahead and boost up the happiness. The clinic is a good way to make sure that people get cured of any sickness and overall just increase the health. I like all of that. We could also get ourselves a school. This also generates a little bit of science, but perhaps more importantly, the children will go to school and when they uh, reach adulthood, they'll be educated. Educated workers tend to be more efficient in any of their jobs. So we like to have an educated populace if you can. I feel like getting a chapel early on is not a terrible plan. If we're going to do that, we want to set it up somewhat close to the center of the market because you can see the active radius of some of these buildings, and since I'm already going to be placing most of my housing close to the market, it just makes sense then to place both a chapel and a clinic in the same approximate area. Ah, but one problem we're already running into with something like our uh, fishing hut, it does take planks in order to make. We don't have planks yet, that's something I'm going to need, so let's take a look at our tech. I did say I want to go for the herbalist hut, but now I'm kind of leaning toward we need something like a sawmill, a place where we can start getting our planks. There are a couple different versions of this. The sawmill is generally going to be more efficient at making domestic fuel, so you already want this. A water sawmill can be placed next to a flowing water source, like a river, and it gets you even more efficiency at getting domestic fuel or planks. One of the two. Can't do both at the same time. Let's go ahead and activate this. This is always, always a high priority. The good news is, I say it has to be next to a running water source, it doesn't actually have to be next to a river, it just has to be next to water in general. So even a still-ish lake like this will work fine. Let's go ahead and place down a water sawmill. At the very beginning of the game, you really want to prioritize a couple of things. One, make sure you have enough housing so that people are able to start, uh, you know, putting a roof over their head and they're not unhappy. Two, make sure you're producing enough fuel so they can heat those homes and they don't freeze before winter hits, which we're actually getting close to the cold season now that autumn has hit us in September. Three, get your food and your water figured out. So we're actually producing, I think, plenty of water at the moment. I'm going to go over here to this big well. And I'm going to say, once you get up to, let's say, 800 water, just stop. Don't keep working this. Don't waste your time. Go and become a laborer until we get below that threshold. That way we don't just produce, like, an infinite amount of water and take up all of my valuable storage space. Those production limits are really, really helpful. Use those for just about everything. Okay, winter is truly starting to hit us now. Even in October, we're down to below freezing. This is a very cold area that we live in on hard difficulty. Extreme is even worse. So you can see that people are freezing. They'll just go to the nearest house, and as long as they have some domestic fuel, they will be able to heat themselves up. By the way, if you want to know exactly how much science you're getting, you can take a look at a building like the Research Institute. And down over here, it'll tell you what the output is from this building. So after only working a few months, we generate an extra 540 tech XP. And up over here, you can see how much XP you need for every level. Though again, I remind you that cost goes up with every new tech level that you get. So what would be better for me at this point? Probably something like the delivery tech, so that workers in a marketplace deliver the food, water, and fuel that people are going to need at their homes. This is the whole advantage of having a marketplace in the first place. So let's go ahead and activate it. So this one person working here improves the efficiency of everyone else living in his radius. Also, we do have our chapel up and running. Excellent. So happiness is going up just a little bit. Ah, unfortunately, we do have somebody who broke a uh, bone. They need to get healed up in some way. Yeah, all right. That is one example where you need to get something like a clinic. So let's see if we can place this down somewhere that makes sense. Unfortunately, I'm out of some critical resources. We don't have a lot of wood left because I'm turning it all into fuel, which, by the way, is looking pretty good right now. Uh, we don't have pretty much any stone or ore left. We need to continue gathering things off of the surface if we can find some. I think this is mostly going to be just stuff like ore, though. Which doesn't do me a lot of good. I need to find rocks. There we go. Stone. I need lots more stone. Hmm. Yeah, we're already getting strapped for resources. The early few years are definitely the hardest. You need to make sure you get yourself on a good footing. If you can do that, though, you'll be fine. How much food are we producing? I should grab at least a little bit of extra alpaca meat, some wool, some venison. That's all looking good. Yeah, we like that. So what are we getting as far as our gathering huts? We were able to gather up at least a couple hundred extra food over here. It's not quite enough to fully sustain our population, but at least it's looking a little bit better. All right, that's something. We do have a water sawmill going over here as well. Perfect. For now, I'm just going to have one person work here, because we're not going to be able to do an absolute ton. We could start making that domestic fuel at a better rate, but uh, we'll worry about that later. For now, let's set this to the plank recipe, so we can start making what I need to get things like a fishing dock up and a running. We have enough food to keep us sustained for at least a year or two. 
So we're not desperate right now, but the more food we can get early on, the easier it's going to be to stabilize and grow my population at a reliable rate. Another tech point acquired, okay. Anything else that would be really helpful? We could go for faster logistics workers. We'll worry about that later. Baskets, better warehouses, we'll need that at some point. This is a lot of food processing and other such things, making leather and stuff. All of that would be good, but not useful this second. Could start working towards some improved farms. That is usually pretty good. Fish ponds are also really good, by the way, for getting your food up. But I'll worry about that later. Construction techniques? No, not that. Masonry? No, not that. Mining? Maybe. It is nice to be able to start extracting coal directly from the mines. Because then you don't need to make use your wood for as much domestic fuel. Coal is more effective. So I do like getting this early on. Sand pits could be useful to me. We're not going to worry about trade at the very beginning of the game. School expansion? That would let me at least start getting some extra tech as we have students that are learning. That could be a thing. I think I'm going to go ahead and grab the herbalist hut now, and then maybe after that something like a police station, which is a way of boosting up happiness because we're going to keep crime under control. If people get really unhappy, then you find that people start turning to a life of crime, and this is a really good way to make sure you keep that under wraps. Uh, we did finally have some births, by the way. So now it is year two January. We had three births occur last season. All right, so the population has increased. If you look at some of these houses, yep, we can see that there are going to be some children, also a few extra adults living around right now, but yeah. Uh, let's take a look-see over here. Yep, there's one of our newborns right over there. Okay. So yeah, um, we do want to continue growing the population. At some point, you'll end up having so many children filling up your houses that no new births occur. That's okay if you want to have a somewhat static population, but at some point, everyone get, kind of gets old and starts dying off, and you can't uh, replenish your population enough. So just keeping a few houses and like not building out more, it's not a good long-term solution. You're just kind of setting yourself up for a different kind of death spiral in the game as your population ages and can't replenish itself. Always, always, always you want to be growing out at least a few houses per year if you can manage it. Unfortunately, someone already died, froze to death. I'm guessing it's the person who had the broken bone who wasn't able to get to a uh, warm house fast enough. I was trying to work on a clinic, but alas, we did run out of some stone. Every death early on is actually quite painful, so that's unfortunate. But you know what? We had a child who came to adulthood around the same time and took over the job, so we're kind of fine right now. Here comes our clinic, and that's going to help prevent that from ever happening again. For now, I'm actually going to have no one work here because I don't need it. This is mostly just for emergencies. I'd love to have a passive health bonus, but until we actually have someone injured, we can go ahead and keep them working on more important things. The good news is, as the year continues, we're getting into March and it is warming up. The snow is finally melting away. So we shouldn't have anyone freezing, which means we should not need a lot more domestic fuel. I'm going to set this to a cap of 300, at least for now. And I have only one person working here, and then once we reach that cap, they'll just turn into a laborer automatically and go and do other things until we fall below that 300 number. That's going to be a little bit better for us. What's going on over here? We do not have enough wood getting delivered. Yes, we are, in fact, completely out of lumber. That would be a problem. Let's chop down some more trees. There's another tech point. All right. Do we want to go for that police station like I was talking about, or would anything else make more sense right now? We don't have enough population to continue growing out new production methods, at least not quite yet. So even getting a police station may not be a very good option for me. Um, school expansion, though, I don't even have enough uh, people for a teacher right now, so that's not going to do me a lot of good either. Let's think a little bit toward the future. Do I want to get some reeds and stuff? That could be kind of nice. However, in order to get a reed field, we need clay, which means we need to be getting something like sand. This is usually a really important uh, building to get early on. It gets you sand or clay, and you kind of need that for a lot of higher tier buildings. So you know what? Let's just go ahead and unlock the sand mining. Whether I use it right now might be a different question, but I guarantee we're going to need it early on. Another person got injured, unfortunate, but you know what? I was paying attention, so now we have someone going to work in the clinic. They're going to get over here, they're going to get healed, and they're going to go right back to work. Perfect. You can see, by the way, in your clinics that there are different treatments available for lots of different plagues of some sort, and there are quite a few disasters that can occur in this game. Cholera is the only thing I can treat right now. Eventually, we have measles, tuberculosis, and pandemic flu. Yeah, we don't like any of those. Um, later on, we'll, we'll be able to find some technology that helps prevent those from becoming a little out of control. School is now done, so someone is going to start working as a teacher, which is good. We can pass on that education. I just like doing this early on. It's, it's a good thing to have an educated population under all circumstances. 
So the sooner you can get this and the kids reach school age, the sooner you can get a bit of a return on investment. Admittedly, early on, one person teaching two children, it's not going to be great. But as our population grows, this will get stronger and stronger and stronger. For right now, I kind of have to wait around. I just need to wait for my population to start reaching adulthood so I can get more jobs, so I can continue to expand. And if we find ourselves in dire straits, I might need to turn off some of the nice-to-have buildings, like let's say a research institute or a school, in order to keep us afloat on other more important things. If you want to know how you're doing on a lot of important resources, you can click on the statistics up over here at the top right. And let's say go to a food production graph or something, right? We set this to graph mode, and we can see how much food we obtained last year versus how much we consumed. And right now, we are nowhere close to producing enough food. That's why I need to be getting things like the fish up and are running, or, or we could go ahead and start working on some farms. That's what the game wants me to do. It's not a bad idea. I would just need a few more laborers to make that worth my time. All right, we have two people working over here. Let's go ahead and start gathering up some fish. Now, fish, at least, is something you can gather throughout the winter, unlike something like a gatherer's hut or a farm. So at least it's going to be a more consistent form of food throughout the year. Though, admittedly, fish is not worth an absolute ton. I find that uh, fishing docks is not a good long-term solution. You pretty much will always get better yields from better farms. This is just a good early game measure. We have an event. An elder is selling glass bottles. Huh, we could buy uh, some from him if I had silver coins, which I don't have enough, and I also don't need the glass bottles. We could ask him if he buys them, and then we could sell them to him, but, like, no thank you. I have no need for a wandering old man with any glass bottles, so we'll just bypass that. You can see, though, that having those kinds of events come through once in a while can end up being pretty nice. If we were to build up a town hall very soon, we would be able to get some immigrants added into the city. And this is a very good way to boost up your population so we can stop waiting around so long. So I want to go ahead and build out a town hall as quickly as possible. Doesn't really matter where this is placed, so it could be like way out over here, for example. That's completely fine. In fact, I think that might be what I just do. Keep it out of the way. Uh, this doesn't have any particular work radius and doesn't really benefit from being in the radius of other structures. So it just makes sense. But I want this out of here. Absolutely. I want this because I could really benefit from having some immigration right now. The good news is we should have enough resources for this. So I've clicked the prioritize button so that all my builders know this is the absolute top priority for them right now. They'll get over here and then we just have to spend a little bit of time putting it all together. We've got just about two months or so to do this. Should be fine. Okay, got it in time. Perfect. Getting this before your first immigration wave is a pretty important milestone for the game. Again, because right now, our bottleneck is just population. So it makes sense. Getting more people just kind of solves that problem. Now we just have to survive the winter. Hopefully people don't travel too far to work on their jobs. We already had somebody freeze to death because they went chasing a turkey all the way out over here. Oh well, what can you do? I mean, <laughs> it seems like just Darwinism at work, you know what I mean? And we should be getting a notice about the immigrants right about now. Yeah, some people are now entering the map. They're going to start walking all the way over here, and then they'll apply for citizenship at the town hall. So any second now, we're going to see a convoy of people. Oh, there they are, right down over here. See? Oh, wow, that's a lot of immigrants, too. Nice! We're going to get a huge influx of people right now. I like it. Ten immigrants in total. Heck yes. All right, got that. Just in time for February. It's starting to warm up, so hopefully you guys aren't going to freeze to death. I will make use of these guys to start uh, constructing some homes for themselves, and then we're going to start gathering a lot of resources. Namely, I need to fell a lot more trees because we are very low on lumber. And then I'm going to make the use of these guys for a lot of different projects. One, I want to get some additional forester's huts. This one, actually dedicated for uh, planting and chopping down trees. So we need that. And then also I'd like to get some farming up and running because that's going to solve my food issues. We do currently have five tech points available. I kind of haven't been spending all of these because I haven't really known what I want to go for. Let's start by getting something like the school expansion since we're going to have a boost in our children fairly soon as we have more population. Let's get the mining up and running just so I have it available. And then let's go under agriculture and pick up something like compost and a farm. And we could go for fodder and start working toward the eco postures, but I think no. Let's just go for farming efficiency. And what this is going to do is make it a lot faster for us to sow and harvest at a farm. We like that because uh, that means I can have less workers per farm and still maintain the same rough amount of efficiency. So this is really, really good for me. Now, a lot of our early game farms are going to be very temporary. I just need to have a place we can grow some food for now, and then we'll demolish it when I need myself a bit more space. 
So for now, I'm gonna set up over here. Now, I have found, so in my experience, that a six by six farm is the most effective. You can go a lot larger than this, and some people would recommend that. Generally speaking, the larger the farm is, the more people will need to work it. So having three people working on a farm can be better than having two, but it has to be a little bit larger in order to justify that. However, I found that 36 tiles, so a six by six, is the maximum that one person can work reliably if you have the extra speed for sowing and harvesting, and it ends up being pretty dang efficient. So I'm gonna be placing down a lot of small farms instead and seeing if that gets me enough food to keep me going. Once you place down your farms, you do need to decide what you're going to be growing here so we can choose from a couple of seeds. The only ones I've got right now are tomatoes and broccoli. We can find more on the map, or once we eventually get to the trading segment of the game, we can try buying different seeds. So let's take a look at these. Uh, output is eight per grid. Harvest period is 80 days. They have the same growth temperature. They are identical in every way. So I guess we'll just go ahead and just do a mixture of both. Just so we have a bit of food diversity. Maybe that gets me a little bit of extra happiness and health. Otherwise, doesn't matter all that much. Let's see, what are some other things I'm going to want? Let's place down something like a tailor and a smithy in the town. Ideally closer to the center where all of the storage is located because uh, obviously we want to reduce the travel time there uh, But the sizing of this is just like perfectly inefficient Ugh, Hang on. Let's see if we can make this look a little bit better. I like having nice space efficient towns, okay? Eh, this will work for now. We can fit some smaller buildings right over here a little bit later. Okay, perfect. So a smithy and a tailor. I have enough laborers to go around where I feel comfortable doing that. That means we can preempt our needs for clothing and some tools. Hey, we found a seed. Out of curiosity, what would that seed be? Beans! We found peas! Excellent. These take longer to uh, grow and then harvest, but have a better output. So actually, um, forget the whole broccoli and tomatoes thing. Uh, peas are going to be the way to go. So let's see just how much food we've been able to produce out of one of these fields. 288 tomatoes, 288 broccoli, and that's from only one person working. That's pretty darn good. Contrast that with something like a gatherer's hut, and that's produced something on the order of like three or 400 food for two workers. Roughly equivalent, but probably not quite as effective as a couple of these farms. Contrast that even further with a fishing dock, 186 food so far this year for two workers. That is abysmal. So this is one of the reasons I don't usually rely very heavily on fishing docks, especially if I can't set it up next to a fishing point. It's really just a stopgap measure if you don't have a lot of other options. I probably will end up relying less and less on these things and gradually demolishing them, unless I can get some upgrades, which will make these more effective. We're keeping up-ish on water, though at some point we are going to need a second well now. And food, if we can keep getting these farms out here, we're gonna end up being just fine and dandy. Now it's just a matter of kind of keeping the essentials going and get ourselves into a good economical position to start exploding out in our population and get a whole load of production buildings up and a running. I think I'm gonna end this video here though, but thank you all very much for watching. And again, thank you to the developers for sponsoring this video. If you guys like what you saw and you'd like to learn more, you can find a link in the description down below. I will be back in a couple of days. We'll continue up with Relyton and see if we can turn this into a thriving metropolis. Be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe for that future video, and I will see you guys next time.